legendary game. So tall boys when it's with legendary don't know back in reaction it's today. We got NBA, shout out to Jimmy High Roller, man, you know what I'm saying? We got NBA. It's a big bully problem. Nah, I don't know if we actually talking about the bigs. I'm not really sure of the concept, you know what I'm saying? I saw it. Yeah, it feels me. I saw one of the greats react to it, you know what I'm saying? So, I got to take notes from the greats, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I knew much how I come to roll 10K, you know what I'm saying? But, hey, man, if we talking about bigs, a lot of these bigs are evolving, bro. Like, especially from these different eras and standpoints, you know what I'm saying? But, hey, man. Get to it, man. The NBA has a big bully problem. Let's see what's up. Throughout the history of the NBA, there have been countless great big men: Wilt, Russell, Kareem, Moses, Shaq, Facts. Duncan, Dirk, KG, and for years the NBA was a league centered around the big man. In Facts, fact, and that's the era that Jordan played in. The first 50 NBA MVPs were awarded to big men, but about 15 years ago. Things began to change. The NBA began to shift to a more guard-heavy league. Teams began to construct their rosters around shooters and perimeter players, and the one sacred big man began to slip further and further into irrelevance. For over a decade, not a single power forward or center was selected as the league. We evolved, man. You know what I'm saying? Used almost exclusively as a distraction on pick and rolls. Things were looking bleak, and long gone were the days of menacing game-changing seven footers but all of that is about to change back got the new biggies in the league you know what i'm saying and b Giannis, Jokic, stretch bigs man and it's crazy bro when i played 2k it was like always a dream like 2k 17 bro it was always a dream to have a big that can shoot the three bro but now i swear 2k 23 you better have a center that can that can stretch the floor, shoot the three and drive, bro. Two cam on your head, bro. If not so. You know, and B did take a break today, my boy. I ain't gonna count. Now that man, Giannis, man, I ain't gonna count. Three MVPs, man. Even though I think Luke and Anton are playing but better than Yoki is low-key debatable, man. No, he's debatable. Dominant big men have made a violent return to the NBA. The big man is back, and it might just be better than ever. Nah, for real. Now bees can carry teams, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we care. We, you know what I'm saying? We care about your sponsor, man. We know you make it, make you make it a lot more money than me. I ain't making. That I don't care about that. I just don't. You no, know I just care about subs at this point. No, I'm saying it's getting to this month though. For NBA big men and really NBA players in general, in a season-long record-breaking barrage, Will Chamberlain averaged 50. Will was playing plumbers, no cap. Six rebounds a game. Numbers that still don't make any sense. Plumbers. Look at him. The guy's six two. The guy's my height. You know what I'm saying? For decades, this record high PER would go unmatched. And other than a few historic seasons, no one even came close to matching this. That boy, Will Here's was different. I gotta give it to him. Season PERs from big men in NBA history. This is literally every great season from every great big man in NBA history. Here's Kareem's historic 1972 season, Bill Walton's MVP season, Charles Barkley's MVP season, Shaq's incredible 2000 season, the best season of Tim Duncan's career. They're all here. And here is Wilt's 1962 record Damn. season that earned him a PER of 32.1. Oh my gosh. Now, here's Nikola Jokic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Joel Embiid's PERs from this season. Three of the most efficient and productive seasons of any NBA bigs in Damn, NBA. I didn't know that. All in the same season. We oh my talking gosh. About a magnitude equal to that of Will Chamberlain's prime seasons by three separate big men in one in year. In one season, that's tough. This level of dominance from three players absolutely unprecedented. It's statistically unbelievable. Countless greats over countless seasons, and these three young stars have topped all of them simultaneously. The 2022 MVP race has been quite possibly the most wide open race. I swear, it's at least about 10 to 12 people that could have won MVP, bro. It's about 10 to 12 people that could have won MVP this year, bro. I feel like my boy Job would have kept playing, though, no cap. Uh, congratulations to my boy Job, by the way, for winning MIP, man, my boy, no cap. But we coming for that MVP next year, job. You know what I'm saying? We coming for that MVP, Mr. Moran. No cap. We coming for that MVP. 
From if you would have stayed healthy, you would have won, no cap. Steph Curry to Kevin Durant to John Morant. About KD's out the picture, dog, at, especially at the playoffs. MVP award this season. But by the time it was all said and done, three players were clearly ahead of everyone else. Nikola Jokic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Joel Embiid. Now, is it a coincidence that all three of these players are towering big men? Maybe. But hey, there's tough, a man. distinct gap between them and everyone else. Bro, they more RTB and B, man. Players. In fact, outside of Jokic, Giannis, and Embiid, here's the list of players to average at least 27 points per game, 11 and a half rebounds per game, and four assists for a season in modern. That's a B. But nah, I feel like at the end of the, end of the key. Whoa, whoa, nobody. That's, it. That's the whole really? list. Literally nobody. And yet somehow, Jokic. Somebody gonna do that, bro. Somebody gonna do that, bro. Wait, ain't in a modern NBA history. My tweet and Jokic broke it. My tweet. Jokic, Giannis, and Embiid all had averages above this stat yeah. this season. Yeah, yeah, they We're did. Talking about production from big men that we've never seen in the modern NBA. Now nah, Giannis gonna be but top ten all time by the end of his career, no cap. Because since 1976, there have only been two players that have averaged more than 30 points and 11 rebounds a game for a single season. Moses Malone in 1982 and Shaquille O'Neal in 2000. And both of them won the MVP in those seasons. It's a stat line that's so difficult to achieve that it's virtually a surefire way to be named the league's most valuable player. And they yet, tough, man. Both Giannis and Embiid averaged more than 30 points and 11 rebounds a game this season, and neither of them are likely to win the MVP award. Facts. These guys are putting up prime Shaq numbers, and because of how stacked the league is at the moment, both of them will come up short of the MVP. And it's not like these guys it's are sad, man. numbers on bad Shoot. teams. We should get split the trophy. And 76ers won more than 50 games this season and earned top seeds in the East. Giannis continues to put up insane numbers as the most dominant two-way player in the league. Joel Embiid became the first center in 22 years to win a scoring title with an offensive game. The league is so evolving, high, man. You know what I'm saying? Hakeem Olajuwon was his biological father. And Nikola Jokic pretty much broke advanced metrics this season on his way to becoming the first player. Nah, that boy Jokic's a point guard, bro. I don't care what nobody says. 2,000 <laughs> points, 1,000 rebounds, and 500 assists that's, in a single that's, season. Now, dog, if that's can just, recall, man. It wasn't long ago that the best big men in the entire league were second class to the best perimeter players in the league. Within the last decade, players like David Lee, Tyson Chandler, Andrew Bynum, DeAndre Jordan, and Al Jefferson were making... I remember David Lee. David Lee was not all that, bro. Andrew Bynum, boy, he ain't gonna cap. He's kind of tough. Tyson Chandler on the Knicks. Ooh. Al Jefferson on the Bobcats. Uh, he was cold, I ain't gonna lie. DeAndre Jordan, OG Clipper. I just don't remember what team Bynum was on, I ain't gonna cap. I mean, don't get me wrong, those guys were all good players at the peak. But fast forward to today's NBA, and you have to be damn near an MVP caliber player to be on an NBA team. NBA team as a big man. Look at this. Every single one of these players on this could have won MVP. Any one, two, three, four. Uh, Siakam? Yeah, I don't know. I'll put Siakam in. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think all these. Uh, all these people are going to do this good. CP, Siakam, maybe not. But they're not bad players at all. Don't get me wrong. You feel me? 23 and 9, that's some good stats. No cap. It's crazy that 15 players could have won EVP this year. 15. And I feel like if you put LeBron and all these guys, you got to put Siakam and all them in EVP consideration. 15 My guys could have won like EVP. We, this season, we have to turn the clocks all the way back. 15. To Back when the NBA was controlled by bruising seven footers. Oh, David Robinson, you know Shaquille O'Neal, Carl Malone, Patrick Ewing, Hakeem Olajuwon, Charles Barkley. Now, how is that for a league that is stacked with all time big talents? And these weren't just the best big men in the hey, NBA. Look, tough. All of them tough. Charles Barkley tough. Hakeem tough. Ewing tough. Malone tough. Shaq tough. Robinson tough. All these boys is tough. Feel me? We evolving, man. Seven years ago, this was the MVP leaderboard for the 1995 NBA season. Pause real quick. Pippen was up there? Oh, yeah, he was. He was tough. Uh, he still didn't carry Jordan. Jordan is still his own. You know what I'm saying? This is when Jordan wasn't playing, I believe, for me. Uh, Scotty Pippen was a very reliable uh, source on the Chicago Bulls. But uh, Gary Payton, OG, um, Charles Barkley, like I said, man, Akeem Olajuwon was the 
I mean, we, we just evolve, man. Look at their numbers. This is absurd. Nearly all of them are averaging a 25 point double double. It is until the Facts. seventh spot on the MVP leaderboard that we'll find a non big man. And the first guard that comes up is John Stockton. 14? Came in eighth. But he was averaging 12. That's tough. 12 or 6. Even imagine if the best guard in the entire NBA was regarded as the eighth most impactful player in the league. That's well, tough. That was the that era back then was three decades ago. And although the quantity of dominant big men isn't quite as deep as it was in the 90s, the quality certainly is. Nikola Jokic has quickly become the best playmaking big man of all time. I'm saying Jokic's a damn point guard. I don't care what nobody say. Is Bro is a point guard. The defense on all three levels makes him the ultimate threat at all times. There's truly never been a player like the Joker. And his one-of-one -one skill set has single-handedly carried his team to the playoffs and has made Tough. him the league's most valuable player. Gian has been so dominant for so long now that when he drops so he whooping our ass Giannis while being the best defensive player on the court you know I think it would be serious if Lonzo was playing sort of on and if his freakish length and athleticism didn't make him impossible to guard he's now added a mid post game to his arsenal that and a three point defender look absolutely helpless bro is unguardable We're talking about a player with the imposing physicality of a prime Shaquille that man bro my bulls ain't got nobody to stop this nigga bro Bro can score every single time if he wanted to. We keep cutting the sideline, the baseline. You feel me? And, they, and Ray Allen and uh, Kobe Bryant just keep... Ray Allen and Kobe, you feel me? Just keep knocking down sides. Can also bring the ball Ray Al and Kobe and Ray Allen just keep knocking down sides. This shouldn't even be a thing. But Giannis Antetokounmpo if you know, you know. Go take the video out. And <laughs> My Bulls, Bulls, Bulls Bucks reaction. To the point where he doesn't have a single weakness offensively. Shots that were once reserved for the league's best shooters are now well within the bag of a seven foot two inch, three hundred pound behemoth. Players this big Tough. usually have trouble just getting up and down the court. Meanwhile, they're more athletic now. Doing gymnastics as he expertly crafts his way to thirty points a night. All three of these big men, each with their very own unique games, none similar to the others, and yet all of them identically as forcefully dominant. And to demonstrate just how historic this season was for these three players I'll leave y'all with this the 45 club a club exclusive to only the most productive players in NBA history look at the Combined goal man players, points okay. per game rebounds per game and assists per game for any given season and if that total exceeds 45 they were playing in all-time historic territory now throughout the history of the modern NBA this has happened just 23 times. It Damn. was first accomplished by Moses Malone in 1982, followed by some of the greatest seasons by some of the greatest players in NBA history. The greatest player Larry right there. Bird, Michael Jordan, Shaq, LeBron, Kobe, Westbrook had a ridiculous total of 52.7 in 2017. And most recently, Nikola Jokic. Damn, Westbrook is hot in the mud. Boy, that's like he tell you. Probably Westbrook was tough. I know I'm inclined to Westbrook. I miss the Lakers deeply, man. I miss the boys. I miss the Lakers. I trust me, I miss climbing the Lakers, man. We're gonna get back to it next year. I mean, not coming down the line, you know what I'm saying? Thank God. You feel me? Uh I miss the Lakers, man. Look at the GOAT four times. Uh LeBron way down here. Uh no offense though, still a great player. Greatest player in this generation. Uh James Harden on the Rockets was a different breed. He just did not show up in the moments and it sold today. You feel me? I think he had too many Krispy Kreme donuts on the plate this morning, no cap. Uh, you feel me? Well, Westbrook in his prime, man. It's tough. The Got the boy Luca already up there. Luca would be in the Hall of Fame right now if he retired. Ain't gonna lie. Larry Bird, you feel me? All the who aren't Which I think Larry Bird like underrated. I'm sorry, he underrated. Across six seasons who accomplished this feat. Five of those six seasons earned these players MVP honors. This season, Nikola Jokic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Joel Embiid all joined the 45 club. And yet, only one of them will go home as the league's most valuable player. The big man know. is back, and it may just be better than ever. Hope you all enjoy, and as always, until next time. Hey man, shout out to Jimmy Howard, bro. He been take, he been taking his time. Break down these stats and evaluations, and everything, bro. And this is very entertaining to watch, man. You feel me? Um, keep doing your thing, bro. No cap, man. It's gonna pay out hard work, you know what I'm saying? But hey, man, you make sure to come around. That's gonna come around, TK. Comment down below how I think about this video, man. I'm just trying to answer the comments. I'll be I be trying, man. You feel me? I'll just be busy in a mud, no cap. You know what I'm saying? So, but let's turn it down, no way.
了吗？